On behalf of the Dean and Ministry team at Newcastle Cathedral, welcome to a new way of worshipping. As a community, gathering from many places, yet one in faith and hope. In these unprecedented times, we are having to learn to do things differently. We hope and pray that these daily reflections will bring comfort, support and a sense of community to all who care to join us. The Lord be with you. Wherever you may be, try to find a still place, a safe place, a place where you can take a moment to pause in body, mind and spirit. Remember that there are many others, both near and far away, pausing and praying with you in this moment too. We meet in the presence of God, who knows our needs, hears our cries, feels our pain and heals our wounds. Having stilled and prepared ourselves to hear God's word for us, let us listen to the Gospel reading appointed for today. Matthew 1, verses 18 to the end. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfil what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. Remembering that the word of God is living and active, let us now reflect on what God might be saying to us today through this passage of scripture. Today's reflection is offered by Canon Clare. Perching here in front of the icon of the Blessed Virgin Mary and the Christ Child, next to the high altar in the cathedral, it is somehow comforting that the candle here is still burning and it will continue to do so, a symbol that, despite the world appearing to go crazy, all around us, the voice of prayer is never silent. Newcastle Cathedral continues to hold our nation, our region and our city in prayer on a daily basis. Today, Many Christian churches are remembering St. Joseph of Nazareth, Mary's husband and the earthly father of Jesus. I imagine that when Mary broke the news to him of her pregnancy, Joseph must have felt as if his world had gone crazy too. He was all lined up to marry this girl, to settle down and have a family. It was all planned and agreed. And then she drops this bombshell. She is pregnant. And not by him, but according to some crazy vision she's had. 
And sure enough, her belly begins to swell. There's a baby in there, all right. Joseph must have felt as if the ground was crumbling under his feet, as all his plans were thrown into disarray. All he thought he could rely on called into question. And of course, the biggest question, where did this leave him and Mary? The week after Easter, I was due to take a wedding here in Newcastle of the daughter of some dear friends of mine. The church was booked, the wedding reception all arranged, and my friends had been popping over on a regular basis for hat shopping and dress fittings from Spain, where they run a Christian retreat house. It was all in hand, and the preparations were going according to plan. And then... A distressed FaceTime call a few days ago from the stepmother of the bride. Me and my husband can't come to the wedding. We can't leave Spain. All the guests over 70 are saying they can't now come. The venue for the reception won't let us rearrange the date without losing our deposit. The bride is distraught at the thought that her dad won't be able to walk her down the aisle and to cap it all, she now has coronavirus and is self-isolating with the groom who has diabetes. And we really don't know if the insurance will pay. What a disaster. Of course, a few days have passed since that conversation and the world has continued to change apace. But it has taken all the faith and hope my friends could muster to trust that God would somehow bring them through this crisis, one step at a time. You will be glad to know that the wedding reception venue has now relented and agreed to postpone. The church has booked them for another date in the autumn. Hopefully travel restrictions may be lifted by then. They're not through the woods yet, but the bride and groom are tucked up in their flat, spending quality time together watching box sets, no doubt, and learning what it means to be there for one another in sickness and in health. We are living through times when, in the words of Lou Reed, we're going to need a busload of faith to get by. All our plans are in disarray. So much that we thought we could rely on is being called into question. We're just going to have to hope and trust that God will somehow bring us through this crisis one step at a time. And today, I can't help imagining that that may be just what faithful Joseph might have said to Mary, too. Take a moment, press pause if you want, to reflect on what, if anything, struck you during today's reflection. Were there words of comfort? Were there words of challenge? And now, remembering that all are precious in God's sight, let us pray. Remembering Joseph and the faith he put in a changed future, we pray for all those whose lives are caught up in and curtailed by uncertainty today. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. In a time of great change, and when plans might not be as we had envisaged them, with Mary and with Joseph, we ask for wisdom, insight and grace, where there is confusion, conflict and fear. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have, have mercy. mercy. 
as Joseph and Mary recognise the gift of faith and hope. We pray for any for whom hope seems but a distant dream. We pray too for the people who surround them and for each one of us, that in these days we might all see the opportunities before us to help and hold those who need those gifts most. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God our Father, who from the family of your servant David raised up Joseph the carpenter to be the guardian of your incarnate Son and husband of the Blessed Virgin Mary, give us grace to follow him in faithful obedience to your commands. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God, as our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, so we pray. Our Amen. Father, who Amen. art in heaven, hallowed Amen. be thy name. Thy Amen. kingdom come, thy Amen. will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us dwell in the peace and protection of God, this day and always. Amen. This has been our first attempt at uploading a daily reflection to encourage our communal prayer life in this time of estrangement. We expect to get better and more creative as time goes by and hope to include a range of different voices and some music and other images perhaps. If you have enjoyed worshipping in this way with us, Please subscribe to this YouTube channel for the next one and click on the link to our website for more information and updates. Thank you.